Praise God. Crossover. Praise God. Listen, before we get into the first half of this message, um, I, I want to pause a second, okay? Because when your pastor, our pastor, no, our friend shares what he's gone through, opens up his chest and says to us, I've, I've been on this journey and this is that journey and decides that I want to share the pain, but still point it back to the Father when it's all said and done. That is what our faith is all about. That is what our faith, it's so easy that when things are going good to high five each other and be like, hey, my God is good, I just got a raise, right? But to still have your hands on the perspective of who God is not just through the pain, but to still come back and share the pain and then have the clarity to say, but this is not pain. It's actually fake news because I have eternity on my side. I have God on my side and how he operates. In the end, I get to see him again. That's the glory of what we believe, and that's the true evidence of our faith. Give it up for the Lord and the God, Lord Jesus Christ and what we have. Now... Now, the fake news is, and we got to be careful when it comes to fake news. Sometimes we are authors of fake news and don't know it. It, it can be in our body language. When we know someone's going through something and they're going through a trying time, we, we can author fake news by possibly saying, it's going to be okay. But we look like we about to collapse. It's going to be okay. I'm sorry. Right? And that's because you have a relationship and you feel their pain. But as believers, we want to we do our best that even when someone's going through something to be encouragers, because our faith in our Father is an encourager, we don't want to be the author of fake news without even speaking a word, but simply demonstrating a fake hope. See, fake news is what we've been talking about for the series. If this is the first time you've been here uh, and you're kind of coming in, this is the last installment of our series. And on fake news, we've been talking about a few things. Uh, in particular, we kind of started it off a few weeks ago with the idea and concept of fake news. And you know what we're, what, what, what we're experiencing right here in America right now. That This is a beautiful example of what America really is, but in the news and in the media, you know what we've been dealing with with this idea and concept of fake news and politics, fake news that's spilling over into your families, in the job, fake news everywhere. You, you know what that concept is, but we, we, we actually took some guidance from the Lord and was in Scripture, and there were some, some components to the series that even addressed what was going on in real time. For example, the second, the second message was, the storm is coming, but God's got me. How many of you remember that message, right? See, praise God that even during the storm, we cannot believe the fake news that makes it seem as if we're helpless but recognize we can rest in the word of God and use strategies that are in place to find safety. Then the second or the third message was how does the Bible handle handouts, the, the idea of supplements. You, you've heard the conversations before that people sometimes feel that, well, they, they don't deserve this and I can't stand it. The government's paying for this. And, and, and maybe they have a right to, to feel some kind of way about what happens with the money they put into a system. But the idea that we should put a perspective of what does God say about loving your brother and your sister? What does God say about being fiscally responsible and still sharing any increase you have with sustaining the one who's next to you? And then the, the, next, the next topic was, does the Bible support slavery and white supremacy? I mean, we, we, we celebrate a fellowship here where our leadership does not run from what happened in Charlottesville, but run to what happened in Charlottesville with scripture. To say that we can't control what happens outside of our community, but we're gonna make sure that we stand on the word of God and our faith aligns with what it means to be humane with the idea that God is the one who created humanity. And so in that portion of the discussion, we had a chance to be honest about America as it relates to slavery, as it relates to the history of this country, and really the history of the world, it, which was really kind of a great precursor to today's message. See, today's message, does science 
disprove the Bible. Now, if you've been with the Crossover family for a while, you know that we've actually tackled this discussion before. As a matter of fact, I would dare to say that it was almost a whole series dedicated on believing the Bible, the truth of the Bible, the validity of the Bible, and the evidence that is already there as it relates to the Bible. So we don't want to continue to beat you over the head with things that we've already discussed. When we share them with you the first time as a leadership team, the idea is that God is going to be able to touch your heart. We don't have to keep hitting you over the head with it. We're just actually presenting it to your heart first. So then you may ask, well, so what, what, what is the topic today? It says, it says does, does, does the Bible or the science disprove the Bible? We would love for you to look at that question from the standpoint how does science possibly enter fake news into my understanding of who I am and how I got here? H how does science not just disprove the Bible? How can science possibly disprove anything? I, I, I come to this conclusion, and I want you to consider it. You don't have to buy into it. And, and if I was to be wise and possibly follow one of my leaders, Pastor Christopher, at this point, he would normally say to you, oh, hey, guys. Buckle up. Bear with us a little bit. Uh, this, this is going to be kind of, as some people call it, cerebral. This is going to be a little heady discussion here. But when we say heady, when we say it's kind of heavy, it's heavy in the sense that God still provides all the understanding. So at this time, if you will, pray with me, because this is something that normally you may hear on a university's campus, but unfortunately we don't hear it enough within the Christian community or what we call the body of Christ. Father, I thank you that every person sitting here is sitting here because they already identify with the idea that your word says, I will draw all men to me. And Father, because you will do that, I know I don't have a responsibility here other than to share what you have poured into me. Ultimately, what they believe and how they understand, well, Father, that's, that's you speaking directly to their hearts. Lord, I ask you to, to take over and author every word that comes out of me from this point. Father, I ask you to uh, help me uh, get me out of the way. Father, I, I don't want to have any personal agenda as it relates to race, as it relates to any personal experiences I have. I, I refuse to use this stage, Father, to just make a point. Father, your son died. He then rose and presented himself as evidence, proof of who you are. And Father, may we present the evidence of fake news within the perspective of how people manipulate how you operate. Not to answer all questions, but to only help people shape their hearts around the one scripture that says, lean not on your own understanding. Father, Father be with us when we leave and take this message and put it in perspective as we go home. In your son Jesus' name we pray. See, I have to start there. I have to start there because where we go next, and we have a short amount of time, where we go next requires that I am prayed up. It requires that I am sensitive to this idea. As a journalist, and my background is in public relations, I went to school for journalism, I know what it's like to, to look at things and want to know what the sources are and, and, look, and look for evidence. As a matter of fact, uh, it's important that when you're reading and getting sources that you are peeling back the layers and really investigating where the information came from, right? But, but in addition to me having this background in public relations, uh, I also have my faith that I lean on. And so I sometimes find myself going back and saying, okay, let me go back to the Old Testament to under understand a few things. See, in the Old Testament, we believe, and Pastor Christopher, I believe, may have already set this up if it wasn't Pastor Tommy, in Genesis 3, four through five, we were introduced to the idea of fake news. So I won't relive the entire chapter of Genesis chapter three, but, but in particular, when the serpent goes to Eve, and for those of you who are still learning about the Bible, our faith begins with creation and with the idea of the first woman being introduced to this serpent. When the serpent goes to Eve and says, hey, don't, don't worry about what God said. He just don't want you to know what he knows. Ever had anybody call you up because they were acting like they were giving you the goods on something? Maybe they told you about a sale, and then you got there and it was no sale, right? Be careful when someone is acting or they even believe themselves that they are giving you some good information. 
Be, be, be guarded against that. As, as a journalist, not only do I spend time working in the community with media, I also happen to, to, to be a part of the leadership as it relates to Fight Club here at church, and that's the men's ministry. We meet every last Thursday of the month. In addition to that, I work with the NAACP. That's the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Now, I don't know if you've heard of the NAACP, as most people call it, but it was founded in 1909. And as an organization that was founded in 1909, uh, and I don't know if we have a picture up here, I, I, I have to always say this is where fake news crept up again. See, most people would call the NAACP a black organization. Yet, if you see the picture in the NAACP of its founders, out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, only three of them are African American. So well, what does this have to do with science? Well, the reason why we have to start here is because if we have a discussion about science disproving the Bible or science disproving anything, we want to put it in the context of where are we now? Where are we now as a community? And where are we as we came out of the last discussion about slavery and white supremacy? See, we don't want to address these things without putting a perspective on it, especially if science played a part. The reason why the NAACP existed in the first place and many people who follow me and know me, they know I spend a lot of time talking about race, is because I believe our faith was hijacked by people who were actually believing a lie. They actually thought they were operating on the idea of truth within the Christian faith and even perpetuated certain discrimination. In 1909, when the NAACP was founded, it was founded because they were addressing racial inequality what we would call white Americans, Caucasian Americans, they said we could do better. So they helped form this organization. They were aware that the influence around the world that had also creeped into the United States that was coming actually out of Europe at that time was changing the climate of how people believed they should interact with each other. Now, you know what I'm talking about. You just don't know you know what I'm talking about. Let, let me show you a picture. There's this guy named Charles Darwin. Anybody ever heard of the theory of evolution? The, the idea that challenges your faith right now? For those of you who are in college, for those of you who are, are studying science, there's some components of that theory that if you're not careful, it just makes sense. I mean, over time, things kind of get better. And as they get better, they evolve. And as they evolve, surely that's an example of something uh, improving, and they're genetically designed to improve. It makes sense. It's the theory of evolution. What does that have to do with race? It's the perfect example of how fake news is born out of science. It's the idea that science can prove anything and disprove anything when it is fake news and someone has an agenda. Oh, agenda, what do you mean? What does, what does this have to do with Charles Darwin? Go to the original publication of Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. Because most of you in here don't know the original title. See, the original title that contradicts everything that my father is about. The original title reads, The Theory of Evolution, The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection, or the preservation of favorite races in the struggle for life. My Lord, the preservation of favorite races. I want to ask you to raise your hand, but I know most of us in here had no idea that that theory of evolution was supporting the idea of a master race. It later on becomes the foundation of not just inequality in this country, but is responsible for what happened to the Jews. It's the same language that was used to justify this idea of we need to exterminate. As a matter of fact, his second book made it clear. Some people say, well, they manipulated his study. He didn't intend it for that. His second book, his second book read, Darwin ranked races in terms of what he believed was their nearness and likeness to gorillas. Then he went on to propose the extermination of races he scientifically defined as inferior. If this were not done, he claimed, this is in his book, those races with much higher birth rates than, than superior races would exhaust the resources needed 
for the survival of better people, eventually dragging down all of civilization. And he was targeting Africans and Aborigines. Aborigines are the original people and darker skinned people of Australia. This was the second book. He built on that idea in the second book. Now, this is this, now, now, everything you know about my God encourages family. Everything you know about my God celebrates, it even speaks to being fruitful and multiplying. It even gives us the life of Abraham with the idea of many nations coming from a seed. Yet this man is saying that if you are multiplying, clearly, you must be an inferior species. What scares me is not the injustices that was perpetuated against darker skinned people. It was the pure innocence of a race that would be considered Caucasian, white, or European that was wanting to know what to do next that thought that science was leading them in the right way. It's so easy to look at the darker skin, but spiritually, mentally, psychologically, what was happening to this people that we call white or Caucasian that was starting to generationally create evil that they didn't understand was not justified. Oh, we've got brethren that we have to pray for that's not always the victim you're used to seeing or calling a victim. Ultimately, science becomes a thing in which evidence is used based on someone's agenda that threatens your entire perspective. You begin to divorce yourself from the mysteries that Jesus Christ speaks up, speaks of, and begin to look for evidence that you can see and touch. As a matter of fact, as the theory of evolution continues to grow, man starts to look away from what's happening around him and her and their families, the truth of who God is, and man starts to look out into the stars, out into the universe. I'm going to find truth somewhere out here because somewhere out there is the real truth. I can't trust anything around me. But the thing that Darwin's theory of evolution does not do is it never addresses how even his theory can start. His theory never addresses, well, where did the biological life that you say can progress over a period of time, where did that come from? And it doesn't give us an opportunity, his theory, Darwin's, to start to really say, how do I understand my creator? Well, surely it's because it's really promoting atheism more than anything else. But what the enemy meant for Pastor Tommy when his father's time was to go to the Lord and when it was his mother's time to go to the Lord, what the enemy meant was for him to break down, fall apart, maybe drift off into some sin, fall, fall away from this house, begin to just drown in his misery. Oh, woe is me. I've been through too much. But... There's a scripture that says, when Joseph is talking to his brothers in Genesis, he says, what was meant for evil, God meant for good. What was meant when the enemy put our Lord and Savior in the tomb through the hands of man that bought into the idea, I need to justify killing him because I want what I want. The enemy had no idea that it was because of his death that we would be redeemed. It was because of his death that he would wake up and have evidence, scientific evidence, the wounds in his hands that he existed. See, our God is a God of evidence. What's crazy is that it's Darwin's idea that sends man further out into the outer space that begins to prove that there's something special about how we got here, something special about why we were created. And most of us have no idea that scientists since the 90s have been toiling with that idea that there's something special out there. And it wasn't by accident. As a matter of fact, most people assume that if there's science and they're studying creation, that really we're going to get into some formula that starts to prove that there's not a God. So we kind of run from those things. Truth of the matter is, the more you run to it, the more you find that, wait a minute, everything about everything seems as if it was perfectly orchestrated. So perfect, so masterful, 
so amazingly beautiful that you've got to believe that there was a designer. He's a God of evidence. So I ask you as you prepare to watch this video, after you leave here, ask God to show you how do I get filters to debrief me from the fake news that I didn't know was fake news that leads to hate, that leads to confusion? How do I find you, Lord, not by leaning on my own understanding, but trusting that you had a perfect design in mind and I'm part of that design? The scientists you're about to see, they figured out somewhere along the way there's something going on here that's special. Well, I call it God. Keep watching. It is a universe governed by laws and forces that literally hold our planet Earth and the entire cosmos together and are finely calibrated to allow for both complex life and scientific discovery. If you didn't have something like gravity that hold matter together, you would never get planets, you wouldn't get stars, you wouldn't get any complex organisms. If you didn't have the strong nuclear force, there would be nothing to hold protons and neutrons together in the nucleus. And so you wouldn't have any atoms, so no chemistry. If you didn't have the electromagnetic force, you would have no bonding between chemicals. You would have no light, and the list goes on. So you need all these sorts of fundamental principles have to be in place in order for life to occur. Wipe out one of those principles, wipe out one of those laws, no life. During the past 40 years, scientists have determined the relative strengths of each of these primary laws and forces. These strengths are so critically balanced, they are often described as being finely tuned. If you're to take the basic fundamental constants of nature and you were to change these even slightly or you were to pick their values at random, you would almost never get a universe that would be habitable in any sort of way. That is, you couldn't have galaxies, you couldn't have planets, you couldn't have complex biological organisms if these uh, fundamental constants were even slightly different, slightly stronger, slightly weaker than they actually are in this universe. That's the idea of fine tuning. To better appreciate this concept, imagine a machine able to control the strengths of each of the physical constants. If you changed even slightly from its current setting, the strength of any one of these fundamental forces, such as gravity, the impact on complex life would be catastrophic. If you increased it by a little bit, no large scale life forms could exist. Anything that was more than the size of a pea would be completely crushed. So you might be able to get life of a very, very primitive sort, such as bacteria, but you could never get conscious observers. This is one of a long list of properties in underlying physics that seem to be prerequisites for a universe with life. For example, the strengths of the other forces are all important, the masses of the various subatomic particles. If all of these things were even a little bit different, uh, then life uh, certainly life as we know it, could not exist. These forces and constants are another example of the correlation between life and discovery. For not only are they finely tuned for our existence, they can also be understood. It's remarkable how well the laws work. And not only that, it's remarkable how simple they are. And that also is related to the discoverability of the laws. When you consider chance as an explanation for a planet like Earth, you have to look at it in the context of the universe as a whole. While the odds appear astonishingly small that you'd get all the right ingredients to support complex life at this one place in the galaxy, you have to keep in mind that our galaxy is just one of perhaps 100 billion galaxies in the observable universe. Still, logically, I think you have to ask yourself, what if this convergence of factors didn't come about as the result of simply a cosmic lottery or a mere fluke or luck, but what if it's the result of some larger underlying purpose or design? I think we know what that design is, right? That larger underlying purpose. We believe it's the God of the Bible, right? All this was just not an accident. It didn't just explode and happen. It, it was put together for a reason, for a plan, for a purpose. So wasn't that some good stuff? 
You learn some stuff. Like, give it up for James. Like, even the whole thing about Darwin, like, man, what a, what a piece of fake news, right? Like, wow. So as we close out this series, how do we filter truth from lies? So first of all, I have to ask you, do you have filters in place? Do you have filters in place in your life? Because filters are important because they protect you from all the stuff that comes in. If you don't have the filter in place, it can like wreck you, it can destroy you, it can mess you up. You can begin to think the fake news is real. So just like this filter right here for my air conditioning system. If you don't have one of these at your house, for your air conditioning system, um, it doesn't block the dirt and the dust and all the stuff that comes in. And if you don't have one of these in your air conditioning system, after a while, your air conditioning system, it might take a year or two, maybe, maybe less, it's gonna break eventually. It's gonna totally break down and you're gonna have to spend thousands of dollars on getting it replaced because you didn't spend 10 or $15 on this and you didn't properly have that filter in place. Now, so the first question is, do you have a filter in place? The second question is, do you have the right kind of filter? That's super important. So this filter that I have right here, it's a 12 by 12 by one, right? So so if I go to the store, and you you ever go to the store to get these filters and you forget the right, you forget the size, you know, write it down, you're like, I think it's the, uh," and then you get home and you like put it in, I got the 10 by 10, I need the 12 by 12. It's too small, it's gonna fall out, or it's not gonna properly protect the whole thing, you're still gonna get dust and dirt in there and it doesn't work. Or what if I went and got a 16 by 16, it's gonna be too big and it doesn't fit, I can't force it into there. So not only do you need the right kind of filter, but you need to learn how to apply it in the right way as well. So if I put this in on the wrong side, the wrong way, it's not gonna work right. I have to put it in according to the arrow that says the airflow. If I don't, if I put it in on the wrong side, it's not going to work right. So we need a filter, we need the right kind of filter, and then we also need to apply it in the right way. Because listen, the world is preaching a sermon to you. All day, every day, it's preaching a sermon to you through movies, through music videos, through political speeches, through blogs, through stuff you see on social media. The world is preaching a sermon to you and it's saying, come and believe. Come and believe. It's inviting you to come on in and adopt the philosophy. If you don't have one of these, just like we have these, how many of y'all are thankful for air conditioning? How many of y'all lost your air conditioning a few weeks ago? And you got extra thankful then, right? <laughs> if you lost power, you're like, man, it's hot. Oh my goodness, man. Especially pray for the people in Puerto Rico right now, for real. It's even hotter down there than it is here. So imagine that. But just like we need to make sure we have one of these for our precious AC, how much more precious is your heart? How much more precious is your mind? We gotta have filters in place or else the fake news that comes in, we're not gonna be able to block it and process it properly, and we might trade a lie for the truth that we know. So here's the thing, y'all. We have to be vigilant, we have to be alive, we gotta stay woke. Somebody say, stay woke. So this is how I wanna close this series. I wanna end really quickly with giving you three things. How do we close this up? Fake news, how do you filter truth in this 24 hour news cycle that has a lot of lies in it? How do we filter that? I wanna give you three things about filters. So you can write this down or if you're really tech savvy and you downloaded the app, hopefully you did already. If you didn't, you can go download it right now, it's free. Just look it up in the Apple store for the Christians, the Android store for the people who are coming to Jesus soon. Just praying for you now. <laughs> fake news, it was. Thank you. That's fake news. You got me. You got me. The Apple, the Android, you know, it's apples, the oranges. It's all good. So download the app uh, if you've if you got a smartphone. If you don't, uh, just write it down. It's all good. Uh, in, in your notes in your app, that's why I'm asking you to download it. Uh, in your notes, in your app, you can follow along with this. Three quick ways to real, build the right filter. The first one is this. Filter thing, things through God's word. Filter things through God's word. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 
13 and 14 specifically, this passage is talking about, uh, it's talking about how Christ gives gifts to the leaders of the church. And the leaders of the church, the pastors, the leaders, they then are called to equip the people of the church to do the work of God. And so verse 13, it says this, it says, this will continue this work of equipping the people to do the work of God. That'll continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's son that we will be what? We'll be what? Mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then there will no longer, uh, we will be no longer, what, what's that word? Immature, the opposite of mature. We will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown by every wind of new teaching. And, and I've been doing this for over 20 years in ministry, and I've watched so many people that are tossed to and fro by every wind of teaching. Pastor T, I saw this video on YouTube. I read this book. This person told me about this new theology or this thing or that thing or this person at my job showed me this and, and they get tossed to and fro. Now suddenly they don't even believe in the essentials of the gospel or certain things because now they're totally down these other train tracks because they were immature. And when this new breeze came in, they began to get sucked into that. And so here's Paul writing this saying, man, grow up, don't be immature because if you are, you could get you know, tossed around and blown by every wind of new teaching. And then this last part, he says, this is critical. He says, then if you get mature, you won't be influenced when people try to trick us with lies that are so clever that they sound like truth. Listen, just because it sounds spiritual and they throw the word God in there, or even Jesus, that doesn't mean it's right. That doesn't mean it's proper. You need to have the filter of God's word to really look at it and say, is this really, can we really trust this? Be careful. Now listen, I'll say this, and we say this regularly here. You're welcome to test everything and look at everything that that anyone that gets on this platform at Crossover Church teaches or preaches. Like we encourage you, yeah, go look it up. Research, study. It's not just, the words of Tommy is not the words of God. God's word is the word of God. The words of James Cole laughing back there in the corner is not the words of God. God's word from the Bible is the word. We're pulling principles out of it and sharing that, but man, filter it. Look at it. Filter everything through God's word. You're encouraged to do that. The second thing is filter your experiences. Filter your experiences. Don't interpret your own experiences with just a passive mind or an emotional mind. How many of y'all have ever had a season in your life where you were emotional, you were vulnerable, and you believed something or you fell for something that wasn't true? You ever been there? But it's because you were emotional and you were, you know, excited or upset or, or going through something. And, and so, man, filter your experiences. Filter your emotions. Be careful. Be careful. Don't listen to everybody when they try to come in and just press your emotional buttons at certain times. First John 4, 1, it says, Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. Don't, because they're not all the right spirit. You must test them, filter to see if the spirit they have comes from God, for there are many false prophets in the world. It's a lot of false prophets, false teachers out there, false doctrine. I mean, it's been around for 2,000 years. Paul is regularly talking about that in the Pauline epistles in the New Testament, these letters that he's writing to the churches that he started, because there was always people coming up with new ideas that was off. It wasn't really following God's true word, following the gospel. The last one, number three, filter, use a filter, filter with questions. Ask questions. Don't accept everything blindly. But then at the same time, don't reject everything either. Don't go to one extreme or the other. Have this balance where you ask questions. And, And you can also use that filter again and ask questions. What does the Bible say about this? Does the Bible address this? Or if someone's teaching you, trying to teach you the Bible, like, is that in context? Or is that piece of news, is that really accurate? Is that coming from a documented source? Um, What what is this really uh, about? So here's where questions can go wrong. Here's where they can go wrong, y'all. Let me say this. Because sometimes they're gonna find an answer in the Bible, or maybe even a spiritual, godly person that is sharing some truth with you, uh, share something and you don't like it. That ever happened to you? 
you read something in the Bible before and you didn't like it. Or somebody told you something about your life or something you were doing and they were really right, but you didn't like it. You didn't like it. So the danger is then sometimes we'll go looking for something else that's gonna tickle our ears and give us the, the permission or give us the example of what we're looking for to kind of give us, give us the okay so we can continue to do that or believe in that certain way. Because listen, like I said a few weeks ago, pretty much any opinion you have, you could probably find something on the internet to support it. It's fake news probably. But see, you know what that shows when you do that? That you're not really concerned about truth, you're concerned about yourself and maybe your sin or, 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 or whatever you're in right now. There's been times I've read stuff in the Bible, I was like, man, there's been times in my life where someone has checked me and corrected me on something and I didn't like it. But if I wanted real truth, if I wanted to grow in my relationship with God, if I wanted to be right with God, I would just step back and look at that and say, okay, let me ask some questions. Cause they, they, they could be right about that. Cause I, I, don't wanna be, I don't wanna be wrong about that. Mark of a true Christian is that they're gonna uphold and defend the gospel. First Timothy chapter three, it calls the church the pillars of truth. If you're here and you have a relationship with Jesus, if you're watching this online, you have a relationship with Jesus, you're the church. And so we're called to uphold truth. We're called pillars of truth. We're called to defend um, the gospel, the truth of the gospel. What's the truth of the gospel? Could break it down. Basically that, that Jesus is God. Jesus is God, he says that many times. If you ever run into people like, well, he never said he was God. Yo, there's a lot of verses. We went over some of them not too long ago, <laughs> some of the messages. Uh, Jesus is God, that he came to earth as a man and, and he died for my mistakes, for my issues and for yours, because you got some issues too. We both got issues. And he died for those things. Uh, and, and we don't deserve that, but he did that for, it. He, for us. He loved us so much, he sacrificed his life on a cross. And then he resurrected three days later. And now simply if we trust in him, we make a commitment to follow. Like, man, we can be forgiven. We can be redeemed. We can give a, be given a new chance. We have new life. That's the gospel. So all news is slanted in some direction. Did you know that? It's either maybe liberal or it's conservative or it's kind of in the middle or it's, it's radical or it's independent or, or almost all pieces of news have an opinion attached to it, right? It's kind of reported in a certain way that's gonna make you think about, so, so my question is today, my closing question is, so what do we do with that as people that are in here that would say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christ follower, I'm trying to follow after Jesus, like, like so which, which box do I fit in? Am I CNN, am I, am I Fox News, am I, am I NBC? You know, like, where, where do I land? Here's the thing to remember, y'all. Jesus, he wasn't liberal. He wasn't conservative, he was other. He was other. His kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom doesn't rest in Washington, D.C. It doesn't rest at the United Nations building in New York City. It, his kingdom is not of this world. It's in this world, but it's also all over the universe. It's well beyond these little lines of red and blue and all these things that we end up trying to draw the lines. Like, so, so where do we, man, realize, let me remind you guys today, a political party is not gonna save you. A president's not gonna save you. A flag is not gonna save you. A protest is not gonna save you. Jesus is the thing that's gonna save you. He's gonna transform you. He's gonna renew you. He's gonna heal you. He's gonna bring reconciliation, equality, the things that we're fighting for and standing for. It's only Jesus that can do that. So what do we need to do? We need to pray. Because this past number of weeks, I think especially the last seven days, has been an incredibly divisive time for our nation. And I know we've been talking about it a lot. And we're gonna talk about it because we gotta talk about it. We gotta pray about it. We can't ignore it. I'm sorry, but we're not a type of church that just brushes it under the rug and acts like nothing's happening. 
We're going to confront injustice. We're going to love people. We're going to try to bring people together. That's what we do. You look around this room, and this is beautiful. All the different kinds of people you see here. But it's been a challenging week. If you turn on the news, this series is about news. It's challenging. There's tragedies. There's people suffering. There's leaders saying things they shouldn't be saying, calling people names. There's a guy in our church that is uh, currently playing in the NFL. And I called him this week just to pray with him. And imagine the pressure that he's going through and his teammates and, you know, all the stuff that's being thrown at him. And even how their mothers feel after the comment that was made by the president. It's challenging. So here's what I wanna say. We need to pray. We need to pray for the president. Pray for our leaders. Because listen, I believe this. If God could stop Paul on the road to Damascus, this guy that was killing Christians, and he could turn him around, If God could turn someone around like Benny Fernandez, who is a drug dealer in this neighborhood, now he's leading a ministry for recovering drug addicts every Friday night here in the gym, if you didn't know. If God could change a, 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 a crazy college student like my man Trenton back there, who's wild. He's usually in the front, I didn't see you. He's usually up here like with lots of energy and going crazy. If he could change Felix, if he could change Richie, if he could change Greg, if he could change Earl, the twirl, if he could change me, you know what? He could change the president. He could change other leaders. He could change people that maybe they're not where they need to be right now. So we need to pray for those people. We need to pray for Mexico and what's going on. And some of Roberto's family that's over there. We need to pray for Puerto Rico and many of us that have family. Some of my family just left yesterday to go back to Puerto Rico. They were on vacation here and they got stuck here during the storm and they've been kind of just stuck here waiting to get back, not even knowing what they're going back to. There's so many pieces of news that are out there right now And man, it's time that we really get together and pray. Now I know we gotta do stuff too. We gotta act, but see the problem is many times we just wanna go act and we really didn't pray about it yet. So I wanna challenge you, have you prayed? We all can commentate and put stuff on Facebook and talk about it and complain, but have you prayed? I wanna challenge all of us here, and there's a lot of people here today and watching online. What if we all prayed this week? What if we took five to 10 to maybe 15 minutes a day and we prayed for all these things I just talked about in the last minute or two. What if we really seek the God's face and say, God, intervene. Like change the news, change the narrative right now in our nation and show us what we can do. And we talked about it last week. There is stuff we can do. God will pop up opportunities every day for you this week to be a light wherever you're at. But there may be even more. So let's pray, let's ask him, God, what else can we do? but we're begging that you'll do the supernatural stuff beyond what we can do. Like change hearts, stop people dead in their tracks, give them dreams, give them visions, help them not to be able to sleep at night. And you show up in the room and like, man, God does that stuff. He's still doing that stuff today. So I wanna pray for you guys today and pray for us, being that we're talking about prayer because we hear so much news and most of it's bad and some of it's fake, but we need to hear the good news, the true news, the gospel. The gospel changes lives. And I believe it's gonna change some lives here today, just in a moment. So I want you to bow your heads around the room. See the filter that I've been talking about, the filter on your heart and on your mind That happens when you have a relationship with Jesus. It can be real confusing and all this stuff coming at us if we don't have this filter. So I wanna ask you today, do you have that filter? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Do you know him? 
know maybe some of you in here have maybe never made that decision to follow him. You maybe kind of sort of believe, but you never really prayed and actively pressed in and let God begin to change you and show you new things. I know there's some of you here that maybe you had a, a relationship at one time and you've kind of slipped away and the filter has gotten dirty and you haven't changed it or maybe you took it out and it's just you know, all this other stuff has been coming in and it's breaking you down all this pollution all this fake news and you're like man I need I need a relationship with Jesus back I need that filter back in my life so if either of those scenarios is you this morning I want to simply pray for you I want you to raise your hand if that's you raise your hand you're saying that's me I, I, I need I need the filter of Jesus in my life I need to be made brand new again I need to be clean I need to beautiful see hands up all over you're watching online God sees your hands and your hearts as well I want to invite you to pray this with me today and I want you to make these words your words today let's pray this with me say dear Heavenly Father go ahead say it out loud there's a whole lot of you say dear Heavenly Father I thank you for Jesus I thank you for your love Thank you for the good news. I admit I've made some mistakes. I've sinned. I've listened to some fake news. But today, October 1st, 2017, I ask you to forgive me. I need you. And I need your filter on my heart, on my mind. God, show me what's next. Show me truth and help me to represent you everywhere that I go. And show others that you're the way, you're the truth, you're the life. Thank you for loving me not giving up on me even when my filters were dirty my life was messed up and I didn't deserve it you still reached out to me and I say thank you in Jesus name everyone say amen 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 give God some praise today I want to ask you to stand with me around the room as we get ready to close and uh, if you're here today for the first time I want to just say thank you for coming today and uh, we have a free gift for you in the middle of the lobby if you go out there and pick it up we'd love to bless you with something today I want to also say our prayer room is open it's right over there to the right and there's some ladies over there by the door some people back there if you need a free Bible we have one for you we have some devotional books as well a book that I actually wrote called Next. Um, you can pick one of those up for free. We want to bless you guys. And uh, if you're a college student that's here as well, called out my man Trent back there. If you're from USF, uh, HCC, UT, anywhere else, we have a free lunch for you guys after this service as well. It's back in classroom one. You can go hang out and build some relationships with some other college students. Um, next Sunday, next Sunday, somebody say next Sunday. We're starting a brand new series uh, about the Holy Spirit. If you've had questions about the Holy Spirit, or even like what does Crossover Church believe about the Holy Spirit, because maybe you're new here, you haven't been here for too long, um, I encourage you guys be here. Because the Holy Spirit, guess what? The Holy Spirit is that filter that's on our heart and our mind, guides us every day, gives us wisdom and guidance. So we're going to talk about what is the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about... Um, spiritual gifts we're going to talk about being filled with the spirit what, what do all those things mean so i want to encourage you guys be here for the rest of october these next four weeks we're really going to dive into that and share some stuff and so bring somebody with you it's not going to be spooky holy spirit holy ghost it's not spooky it's october no it's gonna be some really good stuff so uh, i want to invite you guys to be here we're going to do one last thing today i want to invite uh, our children's director and her husband, Jen and VJ. I want to invite them to come up here. We're going to pray for them in just a moment. Give it up for them. I 
wanna invite our leaders and, and, and staff to come up here as well. Um, Jen, Jen and VJ have been with us pretty much for around the same amount of time. They started coming to Crossover Church uh, right before we left our old campus. And, and they were both college students at the time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I know we got a bunch of college students back there. And they reconnected with Jesus and, and really like got serious with God and God began to do new things in their heart. Um, and, and Jen has a passion for children. And so, and that's where VJ found her back in kids ministry. <laughs> so, hey, you become an activator. Hey, I'm just saying, it's all my single people. Growth track starts next week, you know, hey. So they met in, in kids ministry and Jen found she had a passion for children and she's done an amazing job the past five years, almost five years being our kids director. Let's give, let's give her a hand and thank her for. So she's had a passion for children and as you can see, she's got one coming. And, and we've talked about this a few times, but if you haven't been around, this has been a high-risk pregnancy. There's been a lot of challenges, a lot of issues. And so they thank you for your prayers. We thank you for praying for them. And, and, and baby C uh, has been a miracle. She was supposed to not be able to have this baby or the baby was gonna come like back in August. And today's October and the baby's still in her womb. And so as they've been praying the last several months about what does this next season of their life look like, you know, this is their first child. And, you know, so they, they really feel like as they've prayed and we've been having a lot of conversations that she wants to stay at home and, and raise this child for a season and, and figure out what God is doing next. So uh, with that, she's gonna be stepping down from uh, being the kids director here at Crossover. And I know that's like, huh, but, but don't worry, they're still gonna be here. They're going to be staying in Tampa. They're coming to Crossover Church. I'm going to dedicate Baby C. I, I was told I have to dedicate Baby C on Christmas Eve. So be here on Christmas Eve for that. Um, but so we want to support them in this next season of their life, in this decision. It's a good thing. It's a, it's a great, this is a miracle. They didn't think they were going to be able to have kids, and God is doing this miracle. So those of you that have parents are like, what's going to happen with kids ministry? Don't worry. We, we got this. It's all good. Jen has done an incredible job creating structure and, and creating just an incredible foundation. There is a team of like 60 plus uh, people that serve on the kids ministry team, great leaders. Um, everything is gonna be continuing to run. There's not gonna be any bumps in the road uh, until we find that next person, it's gonna flow. It's gonna be fine. So parents um, celebrate with them. We got this, everything's gonna be okay. And so, get that microphone. So why don't you share a little something? There aren't enough words for us to express how grateful we are for you guys. To my team who's held it down, you already know how much we love you. To our parents who have supported us and taught us so many different things about raising children, um, we're grateful because you've shared with us your most precious human, that's your kids. Um, and we couldn't be more honored to have spent that time with them. And so. Um, don't worry, you'll see baby C help me when I'm in the lobby and struggling and don't know what to do with myself. Um, but we thank you guys. We thank you for being the church family that you are, for being the people that you are, because ever since I've walked on this campus, it's been nothing but love. And I can't wait for our baby to meet you guys as well. We want to invite you guys, if you could just reach out a hand, we're going to close in prayer today, praying for them, and um, let's just lift them up and lift up this new addition to our family. Father God, we just come before you right now. We thank you for your presence in this place. And God, I lift up to you, VJ and Jennifer. Father, there are two warriors that are standing in front of us right now. These are warriors, Father, that have fought a good fight. God, I know that they've been through so many obstacles, so many challenges, and yet they're still here standing. We thank you for their faith. We thank you, Father, for the firm foundation that their feet are standing upon. 
And I pray, Father, for every loss that they have experienced, God, that you would just bless them abundantly, God, that it would just overflow, Father. Um, God, because we know that everything that you've allowed to happen is because of your perfect will. God, I pray for this new season that they're about to walk into. As, as a new mom, as a new dad, I pray, Father, for not just blessing, but, Father, for wisdom for discernment. God, give them strength. I pray that as a church, we'll be able to help them and lift them up as well. And God, we pray for baby C right now. Truly, truly a miracle, a miracle baby. God, we pray for just a smooth delivery. We pray, Father, for a healthy baby, and we pray for lots of joy. Yes. Not only dirty diapers <laughs> and waking up in the middle of the night, but Father, we pray for just joy and peace upon this family. We pray, God, that you bless them spiritually, physically, emotionally, and mentally as well. God, we're so grateful for them. We're grateful for everything, God, that they poured into our children, our future generation. And we know, Jesus, that you will bless them in return for that. In your most holy and precious name, amen and amen. 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 Crossover family, we love you guys. We'll be out in the lobby hanging out. Go get a free gift. We got eternal shirts out there as well. We'll see you out there. We love y'all. Don't waste your life like Piper mentioned. Don't get lost or kick, kick it. Just kick, push, kick, push. The only real way to know is to jump out the nest and play your float. When you fall, pick you up and go again, go again. There's so much inside you, you don't even realize you need that. Yeah.